Hello everyone. Now we're going to talk about more complex forms of gene expression control. Um, I also wanted you to know that Ringo will be joining us because he is upset that the landlord is here because he thinks the landlord is going to steal him. This is not true. Anyway, we're going to talk about how the expression of operons um, it, are controlled in bacteria. And so we discussed operons previously. Operons are sets of genes on a bacterial chromosome and they produce polycystronic mRNAs, which means that all the genes are on one piece of mRNA. They share a single promoter and they also share a single uh, transcription, transcriptional terminator. However, on the mRNA, as we discussed yesterday, each of the genes has a ribosome binding site and its own start site as well as stop codons. In terms of um, the actual transcription event, all of these genes are transcribed or none of them are transcribed. And that goes to reason because they share a promoter. And so this is a uh, rendition or depiction of the genes on the chromosome, on the DNA, and then we also see the mRNA that is produced by that operon. Okay. There we go. Nope. Okay. Hope none of you are allergic to cats. See, it was funny because you're not in, yeah, online. Okay. Whatever. All right. So, when you're talking about operons and gene expressions, these uh, not all operons are controlled in the same way. It depends on the operon. So you need to know which operon you are talking about because things can be very different for different operons. Today we're going to start out by talking about an operon that has several genes for the production of a single amino acid. So this is um, a sticking point sometimes for people. You have to remember that amino acids themselves need to be made in the cell or acquired from outside. Uh, in bacteria, or at least some bacteria, this amino acid is constructed by a set of enzymes that carry out chemical reactions. So we're going to be talking specifically about the synthesis of tryptophan. In order to make tryptophan, a cell needs five different enzymes. These enzymes work in sequence to produce tryptophan, the amino acid, um, <clears throat> and cells can synthesize tryptophan when there's none already present in the cells. These five enzymes are part of an operon that is regulated as one unit. The genes for tryptophan synthesis, or the genes for these five enzymes, are trip E, trip D, trip C, trip B, and trip A. You see they're all adjacent on the chromosome. The tryptophan operon is controlled by what is called a simple transcriptional switch, means, which means that it's either on or off. And we see this new factor here. So we've already talked about the promoter in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and we know that in prokaryotes, we see what sequences? We see the negative 10 and the negative 35 sequences. And do you remember what actually recognizes those? It's not the RNA polymerase, but it's something else that helps the RNA polymerase find the promoter. So that is the sigma factor. The sigma factor helps to position the RNA polymerase at the correct uh, part of the DNA, and it helps orient it so that it will be moving um, downstream. And so it's going to the bind here at the promoter. Now there's also, on some bacterial promoters, a sequence called an operator, and that is shown right here. And so the operator um, can vary between operons, it can vary between species of bacteria, uh, 
we're not going to talk about what the sequence is for this specifically. We're just going to say it is an operator. It's a, a specific sequence that is recognized by particular proteins. And those proteins, what do we call proteins that interact with DNA? The general name for those are transcription factors. And in this case, there is a repressor, which is a type of transcription factor, which can bind to the DNA at the operator. And that's the scenario that we see here. So remember, again, one of the premises of this operon is that the bacteria is not going to express these genes unless it needs tryptophan. If there's already tryptophan in the cell, either from making it previously or from uh, obtaining tryptophan from the environment, from uh, prey items or something, then we don't want the bacteria to be expressing these genes because then it's making enzymes that it doesn't need to uh, need to use. <clears throat> so that's the situation where we would have a repressor that is active. This repressor is active when it's bound. So repressors are active when they're bound to the DNA. In this case, and this is not the case for all repressors, but in this case, the repressor is only active when it's also bound to tryptophan. And so through this um, process, we can make sure that we shut off the transcription of these genes and that these enzymes for tryptophan synthesis are not made if tryptophan is already present in the cell. And as you probably noticed, since the repressor is bound here at the operator, it's right in the way of where RNA polymerase and the sigma factor should be. So they cannot bind here to this promoter because of the repressor. So that's the whole idea here. Now, I'll let you think ahead a little bit. What happens when our tryptophan levels in the cell actually drop? Well, you probably guessed that then the repressor won't be able to bind to tryptophan anymore, and the repressor will become inactive. And that's what we see here. So the inactive repressor is no longer bound to DNA, and that allows RNA polymerase and sigma factor to come in and bind to the DNA and express these genes. So something I want to um, you to notice here is that there's actually a different shape that is shown to represent the inactive versus the active repressor. And that's because there is a conformational change, a shape change, which occurs uh, when the repressor goes between the active form and the inactive form. Because remember, one of the major themes of this class is that structure and function are related. And so when this guy changes its function, the structure changes, and vice versa. All right, so there we have our first operon that we've discussed. And I'm actually going to end the video here, and we'll talk about another operon in the next video.